Are you uh, surprised with the popularity of uh, your work? How fast it's, uh, you know... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, as an artist, you always want people to really like what you do. Um, and just to get, like, the response that I've been getting, it seems like almost anybody who stops by to take a look at it, it's, you know, it's a lot different than a lot of things that are out there. So, it, it's very antiquated sort of style. It's a old world. And, um, I don't know, I, I'm just happy that there are other people out there who enjoy looking at stuff like this. What was the uh, seed that was planted for the idea for Curse Pirate Girl? Well, um, the first story I ever did at Curse Pirate Girl was a four-page uh, short story. Um, I live, uh, well, I grew up in Ypsilanti. I live in Plymouth, Michigan now. And uh, Eastern Michigan University is Ypsilanti. And I met a professor who was putting on an art show. It was a comic art show. And he was putting it together like a free like comic to give out to anybody who showed up to these things. So um, he asked, you know, a couple different artists. Uh, Dave Peterson, who does Miles Guard. Uh, he did a four-page mini in that. And, because uh, he went to Eastern. And so I did a four-page story just about this, you know, little girl who's a pirate and has a patch on her eye and stuff like that. The idea sprung from a drawing that I did. It was more of like a tattoo art inspired, like a pinup girl. And it was just, you know, uh, very, a much older version of Curse Pirate Girl. And she was, uh, had like a big treasure chest on one shoulder. And she had a giant anchor that was hooked into a shark that was breaking through a deck. And all kinds of stuff like that. But I really liked the design of the character. So then I just sort of, you know, I made it like all ages. When did you know this is what you wanted to do? This is what you were going to be spending your time doing for well, a living? I knew I wanted to be a comic book artist since I was about seven or eight. You know, um, <laughs> I just knew that's what I was going to do. And I was, you know, the artist at school, and everybody said, "Oh, you're, one day you're going to be a famous artist." And blah blah blah. And so you know, I just, I, I, it's the only thing that I can do, really. And so I just sort of focus on that. And I've had, you know, a lot of good um, uh, support. Like, my family is very supportive, and they really believe in, in me as an artist and stuff like that. So that's really important to have, you know, parents that don't sort of cut you off and say, no, you need your real job, blah, blah, blah. So I went to art school right out of uh, high school, went to Pittsburgh, the Art Institute of Pittsburgh for two years, uh, came home, started working in an art supply store, and uh, just kept working on the portfolio and going to shows and going to critiques and stuff like that. Any uh, words of encouragement for the uh, young artists out there that are trying to break into business? Um, yeah, just, you know, keep, keep drawing. I mean, I I really have no social life. All I do is draw. I live on a farm. Uh, we have a couple of sheep. We have some ducks and chickens, uh, a couple of dogs. And um, my wife pretty much takes care of uh, most of that. And I just mainly stay indoors and draw. We don't have uh, cable TV. We've got, like, a DVD player and lots of movies and stuff like that. But, uh, I, yeah, I just draw all day long. And the life of a lone artist yeah, is uh, yeah. not unfamiliar in this uh, industry, but uh, you seem to be doing a great job. Everybody loves your work, and uh, here's to hoping that it continues to, to be great, and we look forward to seeing more stuff from you. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Sure.